Okay guys, today we are gonna be buying our first mountain bike and I'm gonna show you how to do this properly and saving as much money as you can. So step one, you go, you pick out the bike you want and you put it on your credit card and worry about it next month. Today we're gonna be looking at how to buy your first mountain bike we we'll start with the basics and picking out your first hard tail. So we're gonna start off with what a hard tail actually is. It's as simple as it sounds, no rear suspension. If there's any bike, doesn't matter on wheel size, whether it has front suspension or not, a hard tail bike can be described as one with a rigid rear end. Okay, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for subscribing and we're gonna keep making some videos like this to help you out. So picking out your first mountain bike, you have to narrow down exactly what you're gonna be doing. Are you gonna be riding heavy trail or 50-50 commute or just a little bit of trail and then the commute. So one of the big things when you're buying your first mountain bike is you wanna look at the gears it's got most of them now are coming with two on the front and a variety on the back, or if you go to a higher end one, you're actually simplifying it and just going to one gear on the front and then even more on the back. Generally with trail riding, you don't need as many gears. You can skip the finer increments. You can go to a simpler system, which makes it easier to ride, little less maintenance, and then less trouble while actually riding the trails. With a commuting bike, You get lots of gears. You get lots of gears. That way you can always find that really comfy gear to keep your efficient speed up at. Using the Trek Merlin 7 as an example here. This is the 2019 model. It does have a three by system on it, which they've changed this year to a two by. And then it has a good amount of gears on the back, a big nine speed. Many bikes now will come with hydraulic disc brakes, so they're good for trail use or city use. Hydraulic disc brakes will just stop you faster and they're more consistent in all weather conditions, hot, cold, wet, dry, they're just gonna work. Wheel size isn't as important. You can spend days, and I mean days, looking online, 27 and a half, 29, either of the two is fine, unless you're just looking for a budget option. Then that's where you go back to your 26. It does the job, it worked for years. There's nothing fancy about it, nothing crazy new going on with the 26. 27.5, they say is a little more playful. That's what I ride. 29, they say is a little faster. Technically speaking, the 29 should roll faster, but it's a little more wheel to handle. So once you've picked out the exact riding you'll be doing, light trail, heavy trail, or commuting, you narrow down the gears and then you look at the suspension. So each suspension for the most part will have a little marking on it saying exactly how thick the stanchions are. So these ones are a 28 mil stanchion. This is a stanchion. Essentially, the larger that is, the less it torques and twists. Therefore making your suspension more efficient. You go all the way up to say a 30 or a 32. And then on the big heavy trail bikes, on the big heavy trail bikes, you're actually looking at bigger. So you're looking at 32, 34, sometimes a 36, but not too much on the trail bikes. Pretty simple. It stands for the diameter. So <clears throat> with a big 29 inch wheel, standard width, 2.2, 2.4 wide. That's kind of bike which you'll be able to commute really fast on. You'll have a fast roll, not too much rolling resistance. And that way you're gonna be able to roll fast on the pavement, hard pack stuff, and still have a fast speed on trail. When you look at something like these, 27.5 plus, you see them more and more on hardtails, higher end, playful hardtails. These are for the bikes, these are for the riders who actually want to 
play around a little bit more, be a bit more aggressive. Don't care too much. Don't care too much about the speed on, on road or anything like this, but you want a bit more forgiveness, a bit more comfort on the trail. That's where you go to plus size. Narrow it down exactly how many gears we want. We're gonna go for one with a decent amount of gears, maybe a two by on the front with a good variety on the back, and that's gonna give us a mid-range trail bike. If you go higher to a one by or one by 12 or 11, that's when you're looking more trail. So downside to like a one by system is you're gonna have less increments. That way if you're pedaling consistently, non-stop on a flat smooth surface, you might never find that perfectly comfy gear to roll in. You might be too hard pedaling or too soft pedaling. So that's why they still have on these commuter style ones, finding increments, it is a comfier ride for you overall. You've picked out your suspension. You want something a bit bigger than a 28 to give a bit more support because you know you're not gonna go around the rocks, you're gonna go over the rocks. Brakes were here, we're just assuming you went for the hydraulic disc brakes. Like I say, we have them in almost every single model, just above the $500 mark. Tire size, you'll look at forever. 29, technically fastest, but we'll have the longest wheelbase, so technically not as agility. 27.5, you're gonna be the most agile, faster than 26, pretty fast. 27.5 plus will just add you a little bit more comfort to it, a little bit more forgiveness, plus they do look a little cool. One of your last steps is to think about frame geometry. So when you're looking at an entry level mountain bike, they are gonna have a comfier upright position to make you enjoy it more, to make the road and commutes a little comfier, a little more enjoyable. And then as you go up to the trail bikes, you gotta get a little slacker. So it's gonna be able to take the rolls easier. It's not gonna be as efficient for riding around town, but a little more efficient for going downhill and over aggressive bumps. So the last thing you need to look at is budget. How much do you have? How much do you want to spend? Uh, essentially, you can spend unlimited on bikes. Is it necessary? No. Does it make a difference? Yes. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. In the models, you do notice better part spec, better brakes really quickly, whether or not you're on a trail. And it's only gonna be more noticeable on the trail. So if you get a chance to test ride a few bikes, that's the best way to do it. Even if you're not test riding them exactly where you would normally ride them, you're gonna feel how the shifting changes. You have to look at what's different with the bikes whether that's gonna make a difference for you, or if it's not, then it's not that big of a deal. I think geometry is the last thing you really need to think about it in the grand scheme of things for a beginner bike. Just focus on whether or not you want a wide set of gears and a comfier ride on road, or whether you want to be a little faster off road and you're okay with potentially not having those fine increments off the trail, so on road. <laughs> tons of bike options out there. It's always good to try them. Lots of the bike shops, if not all of them, will let you test ride them around. Hopefully they have a trail nearby. If not, it's not that big of a deal. I always find if you can notice something on the road, you'll notice it on the trail five times as much. So don't focus too much on the little details. Stick to your budget. Stretch it a little bit if there's financing and you have the cash flow available but you don't need to start mountain biking on a $10,000 bike or a $7,000 bike or even a $5,000 bike. You can start biking on a $600 bike. Just know it's going to be a bike which works really well on paved trails or groomed pack trails compared to the fast single track you may be watching in a Red Bull movie. So I hope this video helped. I hope it narrows down your options of bikes. Check out my other videos comparing the Merlin series and the Roscoe series. And subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you to the first 100 people who have already done that. It's pretty awesome to do and see. 
and I'm gonna keep making biking videos. And we will add some motorcycles at too. We just need all this white stuff to disappear. <laughs> 